Yo, is this thing on? What's going on, guys? Today is January 31st, 2020. It's also the first edition of the Jamari podcast. It's been a very long time coming. I've been wanting to make long-form content for a very, very long time. So here we are. I'm finally going to get that long-form content bag. So whether you're listening on Spotify, Apple Music, YouTube, SoundCloud, I just want to say I appreciate you and thank you for supporting me. Thank you for listening to the first episode of this podcast. What I really want this podcast to be about is really just the inner workings of my own brain, how I feel about certain hot topics, how I feel about sports, celebrity news, worldwide news, while also being able to give you guys some life advice at the end with a couple of email reads and, you know, what I would do in your given situation. So I'm really excited for this podcast to be coming out. If you're on YouTube and you're wondering why you can't see me, it's because I'm going to be adding the video component to the second um, episode of this podcast. So I wanted to give myself kind of a chance to see if I liked it better just being audio or having a video component as well while I record these things. So I'm going to be playing around with the format for at least probably the first 10 to 20 episodes here. So uh, yeah. First off, guys, I wanted to talk about, uh, actually kind of started on a bit of a sad note. Rest in peace, Kobe, that man Black Mamba. You know, when I heard the news, I really couldn't believe it. And I was pumping gas, and as I was pumping gas, I was looking down at my phone. I checked Facebook, and one of my friends had posted, Rest in peace, Kobe, you were my favorite as a child. And the first thing I immediately thought when I saw that was that maybe he had gotten hacked. Like, this couldn't be real. And so I immediately went to the newspaper of the world. I went to Twitter to see if, you know, there was any truth to this news. And all of a sudden, all over my timeline, all I see is that Kobe Bryant has died like three minutes ago. Or at least that's when the news had broken. It was just one of those mind-boggling moments. The only other time I felt that way about a celebrity death is when Mac Miller passed away a couple of years ago. And this may have even been on a bigger magnitude because it was really like the entire world was shook. Basketball is such a um, worldwide game. It's like pretty much the new soccer these days. And Kobe Bryant was probably the most famous basketball player right next to LeBron, you know, from the early 2000s up until today. So that was just crazy. I really can't fathom that type of thing happening. And at first, not only did I didn't believe it, but once I came to terms with it, you know, it had happened. Then they started releasing information about how his daughter was also uh, in the helicopter crash. So life is short, guys, or I should say life is fragile. Go hug someone you love today. Make sure you tell, you know, whether it be your friends, your family. Somebody you just met that you love them because you never know when it's going to be the last time you're going to see someone. And I really haven't seen the world shaken by a death like this in a really long time. Maybe since like Michael Jackson. And even then it wasn't really the social media era it is today where, uh, you know, all these clips are being shared of Kobe. And you see how much that people really want to honor his legacy and show what he was all about as a man. And throughout this whole thing, one thing I really hate is the way the media handles the death of a celebrity and a celebrity athlete that was this big. I mean, don't get me wrong. There's nothing wrong with honoring him. It's very important. Like, I think it's it's good that they've been doing this 24 second violation, eight second violation thing in the NBA today. And, uh, you know, for the last week, because it's just a really good way to honor this man and how much he truly meant for basketball and it's pretty obvious how much he meant to a lot of these young players I mean he was pretty much like a lot of these guys coming into league like they're Michael Jordan like he was the mold of the player that I'm sure a lot of these guys wanted to be exactly like and so of course on a night-to-night basis you have different players from different teams playing for Kobe saying this season's for Kobe crying their eyes out I mean it's a very emotional thing And one of the most annoying things is that after every single game, these reporters just get in these kids' faces. Some of these kids are like, you know, 20 years old. Some of these are grown men. They have families. They're in the late 30s, and they're still all in the face asking them, oh, you know, really good game. Was that one for Kobe? 
I mean, they even had this interview with Kyrie Irving where he didn't want to talk about the whole Kobe situation. He was pretty, being pretty obvious that that was something that was weighing on his mind that he didn't want questions about because he probably didn't want to tear up and cry and look weak and just probably trying to get that off his mind at this moment. And the reporters would not stop pushing whether or not his you know, pretty good performance for the Nets and a game-winning performance was for Kobe Bryant. So I thought that was a little bit ridiculous, especially considering, you know, how much of a mentee he was to Kobe, how much he looked up to him, probably as, uh, you know, either a bit of a father figure or a bit of at least a big brother figure to him. So I'm sure that this was devastating news for Kyrie. He's been having a really hard time mentally lately as it is, and I can't even imagine how this news hit him when it broke. So, uh, yeah, it's just been the news that shocked the NBA. It's been the news that shocked everyone because Kobe was young. Kobe's daughter was, uh, you know, the closest thing to him in his life, it seemed. And wow, just to have them both taken in this type of tragedy was, you know, world shaking. So rest in peace to the Black Mamba. I got to see you battle my San Antonio Spurs so many different times in my life. I got to see you crush my heart so many different times in my childhood. You were pretty much like a super villain to me growing up. And, um, you know, it's funny how when an athlete has that type of effect on you, at least this is how I see it in your youth or at any time when someone, oh man, this guy is like a villain. He keeps ruining my team's chances to go to the championship and whatnot. It's funny that over time, those guys can kind of almost become even more respected or in some cases loved by whoever was hating them just because they're that damn good. It's almost like when I watched Tom Brady, I used to just hate him with all my guts. I hated LeBron too. But at some point, you just have to acknowledge the greatness and hope that they can, you know, keep competing at such a high level. Speaking more about football this weekend, uh, actually in two days from when I record this, probably one day from when this goes up everywhere, it's actually going to be Super Bowl Sunday. You got the 49ers versus the Kansas City Chiefs. I've been going for Kansas City for the good majority of the year. I've always liked Mahomes ever since he came into the league a couple years ago. So I got to go Kansas City all the way. Either way, I think it's going to be a good game. You got the number one offense versus the number one defense. And it's going to be going down. It's all going to be, for the 49ers, it's going to be on the backs of uh, you know their running backs. I don't think that Jimmy G is going to be the type to just get it all done by himself like uh, Patrick Mahomes honestly has the capabilities to do. But I'll tell you one thing, the Chiefs better not come out flat like they have been these last couple playoff games because, you know, if the 49ers get their foots on their neck early, they're not just going to take pressure off like all these other teams. They're going to step on their neck and twist really, really hard. But I'm still Kansas City all the way. I still think that they'll find a way to get it done. I don't think that they're going to come out flat, you know. This team is almost just so cocky that they seem, in a way, unstoppable. Like, they just have this unbreakable confidence. All the players are just dancing around all the time. And uh, so they're feeling good. They almost remind me of, like, the uh, Seattle Seahawks of a couple years ago when they were doing all that 12th man shit. They had uh, the Beast, you know, Marshawn Lynch, um, Russell Wilson. They had uh, Richard Sherman. They were doing all that Legion, Legion of Doom stuff. And uh, that's when they were feeling real confident until someone decided not to run the ball and end his entire dynasty. So that was a, you know, a huge mistake, a multi-million dollar mistake that costs a lot of people a lot of money. Let's hope the Chiefs and Andy Reid don't do anything that stupid. I do want to see Andy Reid get a Super Bowl. He's one of the greatest coaches of uh, the last, you know, decade and a half. And, you know, he's one of the greats of this era who still doesn't have a Super Bowl. So he really deserves that. Um, let's hope he coaches well in that game. And go Chiefs, man. Go Chiefs. I'm hoping that they win big. I also know that there's going to be a lot of foolishness going down in Miami. Miami is just a nasty place to go. I'm sure it's going to be getting real ratchet down there. You know, if your girl's down there in Miami for the Super Bowl, my friends... That's not a good sign, man. That's not a good sign. Oh, I'm, I'm just going with the girls. We're just going to have a good time. All of a sudden, you haven't heard from her in 10 hours. 
You try calling her, her phone's turned off. She ain't posted a story the whole time she's been there. You're like, what is really going on here? Stay safe out there, my soldiers. You gotta stay safe. Let's hope that nobody that's traveling down there to the Super Bowl, or maybe let's hope some of those idiots down there uh, get the coronavirus, this Chinese virus that has been killing people all over the world. You know, that coronavirus really sucks and everything, but it's just funny to me how every couple of years, it seems like there's some new disease that's going to absolutely wipe everybody out. There's always reports of this bullshit. Like, you remember Ebola? Who remembers Ebola, man? That that gimmick died down rather quickly. I, I think the original one from my childhood was swine flu. The people were coming over with this pig flu and fucking dying. And um, at this point, I don't know. I, I, if, if you're one of the few people, like if you're one of the one in the millions of people who gets this coronavirus, you know, you got to just accept your faith sometimes. Maybe it was just uh, your time to go. I've been seeing a lot of Asian people up in arms saying, oh, this isn't an excuse to be racist against Chinese. And listen, guys, you don't have to be mad at everyone. You already have the world all figured out. You already have are having the perfect amount of kids. You already have a beautiful infrastructure built on, you know, years and years of people just being hard asses and sticking to their fucking guns. So, you know, y'all have a pretty good life out there it's a little dirty there's kind of a lot of people you're really rubbing shoulders with your neighbors but just appreciate the fact that you're not in some you know third world country where they don't even have clean water and everyone just has aids so uh yeah it really kind of puts things into perspective that a couple hundred people dying of this virus i mean it's not anything crazy how many people in africa die of aids a year i don't know but uh Yeah, that's just my little rant about the coronavirus. There's always some new epidemic that comes out that's trying to pretty much just distract us from, uh, you know, something bigger going on. And even with the death of Kobe, it's like, man, very strange death. A lot of outstanding circumstances that we don't really understand right now about what exactly happened. No one could get film of this because it was so foggy. It was just... Uh, a really strange situation, uh, of course, a very sad situation. There was one dumbass comedian that come out, or that came out, and uh, he's one of these Joe Rogan guys, always on the Joe Rogan podcast. And he came out and made a really insensitive joke about Kobe Bryant's death. Literally, I think you know, hours after it happened, which um, I'm not even gonna say what he said in the joke if you want to go find it the guy's name is Ari Shafir look up Ari Shafir Kobe joke and you'll find it right there on YouTube Twitter wherever you are going to be searching that stuff up and pretty much uh this guy just made himself look like a total ass clown he kind of in my opinion ended his entire career I don't see how he's going to be bouncing back from this one especially when comedians uh like a lot of their pay is going to come from performing in Los Angeles it's kind of the hot place to be and I don't think that this guy can step foot in Los Angeles without at least getting his shit rocked at the very least. And that's at the very least. I mean, people love this guy, Kobe. He's a Los Angeles legend. He's a, uh icon in not only our country, but around the world. So this was a really stupid m- move by you, Ari Shafir. And, you know, you shouldn't have done it. Now you're cowering with your tail between your legs. You're putting all your pages on private i mean you just look really really bad um so i just wanted to say that uh we'll see what joe rogan has to say about it, if he's gonna protect his boy and uh you know about protecting your boy that's a good transition into this next little topic that i wanted to talk about which is um so i i know i know these people from high school Right, and you ever see two people from high school? Like I'm, I've been out of high school for like five years, so you know I still have people on Facebook, Instagram, whatever. I don't, I don't really, um, I don't really be interacting with people I went to high school with. It's kind of my point, but I see them on there, and I see what they're up to. And every once in a while, I see something that just makes me say, "Wow," whether it be that someone got pregnant, somebody got engaged. Or sometimes you see two people from your high school who are now dating and 
it just blows your mind because you think, wow, if this was back in high school, I never could have saw these two people dating. And I don't know, something about that is just so mind blowing to uh, an easily, you know, an easily uh, amused idiot like myself. And so <laughs> I, I'd be keeping up with this stuff. I'm just amazed that these two people are dating because uh, I'll just tell you guys the situation. In high school, this one girl was an absolute ho. And this other guy was a sweaty nerd, pretty much. I mean, he was like a dude who played tennis and golf. So it's like you're almost cool, like within your own league of of nerdy girls or whatever. You're probably really popular. You're probably smashing all the time uh, if you want to be with your sweaty ass and your tennis playing Nikes. But uh, yeah, so th- these two people somehow found each other after high school. Someone that this girl wouldn't have even looked in the, in the direction in in high school so it was just amazing to me that he bagged up this whore i was wondering how he was handling that uh you know i'm the kind of creep this is he giving it to a right late night you know i need to know these things not because uh not because i have any interest in the whore or any interest in sucking this dude off or anything but you know sometimes you just see some stuff and you're just amazed by that it's happening (laughs) and uh and so these two people were dating for a couple months or so, it seems. Everyone's following their relationship online. Even when they posted it, like, on Facebook, you can tell other people from our high school. They they use that fucking shocked, that shocked emotion uh, on the Facebook app. And so they're dating. And all of a sudden, like, uh, she starts going golfing because these two people both golfed. I guess that was their common connection. You know, I can't imagine my common connection with my girlfriend being... Uh, being that we both play the same sport you know that doesn't sound cool to me she likes completely different shit than i do uh but at least she knows about sports right at least she knows about sports anyway though anyway so these two people were dating and they were going out for a couple months this guy was really feeling himself he was flexing his uh hoe turned into a housewife and they start going golfing with one of his buddies and i thought oh you know that's cool i remember this dude from high school too uh, he was kind of a nerd himself, okay, kind of a short little chubby nerd, uh, but he's one of those guys that went and got a <laughs> got a P90X body after high school, like he's just in the gym lifting weights because he's he's mad that his life didn't turn out the way he wanted it to, and uh, <laughs> he's like, I'll show those kids back in high school how ripped I'm going to become, you know, the, the, the women will want to sleep with me then. And uh, evidently, they will, because this man, what he did is pull the old bait and switch. He took the girl from his, you know, golfer buddy is essentially what happens. And so I see them going out on date nights now, and I'm just, you know, I'm shocked. I'm amazed. I'm, I'm feel bad for the for the nerd number one, the one that was in those walls for the first time and just, oh, my God. You know, she treated him probably like a nasty little whore would. And so, <laughs> oh man, this, uh, you know, this podcast, I really wanted to feel like you're just hanging out with your buddy at the bar, maybe uh, a hookah lounge. You know, that's all I'll say is a hookah lounge because I don't want to get in trouble. But uh, yeah, something where you're just chilling with one of your buddies and he's telling you about what's going on. So, uh, so yeah, I just thought that that was crazy. And the even crazier part is that the second nerd, you go on his Instagram, and just like four weeks ago, he was dating this other girl who was like a dancer in high school. And now that girl is dating someone who just stopped being engaged. And I don't get how people, you know, move on that quickly. I don't get how people be publicly going from relationship to relationship if you want to do that at least keep something about it private okay take a take a break in between and and don't post somebody or something okay because it just makes you look really bad i'm just glad that i don't have those types of problems in this life that seems like way too much energy for me that seems like it would just take a lot out of me to be having to do that and mentally i'm i'm checking for all these people i'm wondering what the fuck is really going on Something else I wanted to talk about today, um, you know, I'm not going to say any names, and I hope that this doesn't offend anybody, alright, but uh, 
sometimes on Christmas, I'm the type of dude, first of all, that just wants to give a really good gift. Because I don't give gifts to a lot of people. I think I give gifts to around six people on Christmas. And everyone is going to get a pretty expensive gift. Or at the very least, a pretty thoughtful gift. You know, back in the day when I didn't have as much money. But now, for the past couple years, I've had money. And so everyone's getting these, you know, $100 gift. You know, not nothing crazy. I'm not buying Gucci bags. But everyone's getting, you know, at least $100 spent on them. And uh, me personally... I'm someone who doesn't care what type of gift I get as long as it's somewhat thoughtful. I don't care if it costs five dollars, but it maybe it's something I really needed or it's something that you knew I thought would think is cool based on you know your judgment of my personality, your uh, daily you know thinking about me because that's really the only types of people that I am getting gifts for is people that I think about almost every day, and so. I, you know, I kind of start to have a problem when I'm getting people these amazing gifts. I know they say you're supposed to give uh, without expecting to receive anything in return. And uh, I don't expect to receive anything in return. Like, I think that sometimes if I didn't receive anything, it'd be better than some of these gifts uh, that people give me. Because sometimes I unwrap a gift on Christmas and I'm like... Do you even, like, know me at all? You know, it's almost like insulting that you got this for me. Because this is just not me. You know, sometimes... And and it's one thing if I don't really know you and you're just for some reason getting me a gift. You just feel like being nice. Oh, whatever you give me, I'm going to be very appreciative for. But if you're someone who knows me very well and you're getting me, like, a random weird gift that I obviously wouldn't want... I'm, you know, maybe would rather have not gotten a gift in the first place because it just tells me, you know, it's almost like, fuck you, I don't really care. I knew we were both going to get each other gifts and uh, I don't give a shit about what I got you. So here you go. I got it the last second. I just picked it up from the store. There was no thought put in it. I walked into the store. I had no idea what to get you. So I just grabbed this piece of shit and I went. (laughs) And so, uh, yeah. Am I a bad person for that? I don't really know. Maybe I am. You know, maybe I am a bad person for uh, the way I feel about gifts in that way. But all I'm saying is some people are going to get some uh, change-ups in their gifts next year. Okay, I'm a fucking petty asshole. And it's been too long of getting bad gifts from this person. Um... It's almost as bad as re-gifting a gift as giving someone a gift that you know that they just wouldn't give a fuck about. Another thing that I want to talk about in the wonderful world of sports is uh, the return of the next basketball messiah, the return of the next chosen one. That boy Zion Williamson has officially started his career. A lot of you guys know from my second channel that I'm a big fan of Lonzo Ball, so I couldn't be more excited for this Pelicans team. I couldn't be more excited uh, for this young guy coming into the league. I hadn't really even been watching basketball this year. You know, I was kind of bored of watching the Lakers. The Spurs are boring. They're uh, a trash, you know, team that's barely going to make the playoffs this year. Even if they do make the playoffs, I'd rather personally see the Pelicans uh, make the playoffs this year because that would be a lot more exciting than watching the boring Spurs. Um, even though I love the Spurs, I love the franchise, but, um, yeah, I'd just rather see the Pelicans this year. I would rather see, uh, what those young, young guys can do if they could pull off any upsets or anything like that, because the league is kind of just wide open right now. Anything can happen with the, uh, destruction of the Warriors dynasty over there. And, uh, just a lot of different superstars moving to a lot of different teams. Now that Kobe passed away, all these different guys are going to be dedicating their season to, uh, to his legacy and, We're going to see LeBron go full robot mode, and we're going to see Kawhi go full emotionless mode, and uh, it's just going to be, you know, his death ain't good for the NBA, but I'm just saying it's going to be a good end of the season with all this crazy shit going down. Um, So I'm looking forward to that. I'm looking forward uh, to see what Zion's going to do for the rest of the year. I really hope he can stay healthy. 
All right, guys, so now we're going to get to the portion of the show where I do give you guys advice. I'm going to be responding to a couple of emails out of literally hundreds of uh, that I received these emails just kind of stood out to me based on the uh, you know the title of the subject or you know just the first couple of lines I thought that they would make interesting emails I haven't read through any of these all the way so we're going to be checking these out together and unpackaging uh, these types of things so go and uh, send me more emails if you want advice I am just responding via email to some of you that's uh, jamari advice at gmail.com I hope you guys enjoy this segment of the show and uh, let's get right into this first one. This person says, Good day, Jamari. I'm Australian slash English, and I moved to Scotland when I was 18. Before then, I lived my whole life in Australia. So this person is uh, is an Aussie. They're going to have some cultural differences from us over here in America, but uh, shouldn't be anything too crazy uh, from a difference in their lifestyle. It's not like they're from, you know, Africa or from China, where they got viruses breaking out and shit. Uh, Despite a traumatic upbringing, I ended up with a few part-time jobs over the years, like I actually worked for my money. Fast forward to now, 21, moved back in with my mother after not living with her for almost 10 years, smoking weed every day, and living on welfare. Okay, so she hadn't lived with her mother for over 10 years. She says she had a traumatic upbringing. So this maybe tells me that her mother uh, wasn't the best mother. I don't know if she got taken away. I don't know if her parents got divorced and she stayed with her dad. But, um, you know, she's back living with mom after a whole decade. She spent the last decade away from her. And now she's back under mama's roof. And I don't see, you know, this going very well. Depending on, you know, I guess that they're both on welfare and, and... They're living in the projects of Australia. So she said, I haven't worked for my money since arriving back in Australia in April. And I didn't work or and I didn't work a bit before then in Scotland because my ex partner was in a wheelchair and I looked after him full time. Okay, so you know, I, I hate to say it, but some people they can't help but attract, you know I'm not saying the wheelchair thing is a negative. But um, it definitely has been a hindrance in your life. I would say some people attract hindrances and kind of bring them on themselves in this life. So maybe uh, she went and lived with this guy in a wheelchair and um, and maybe he was paying the rent uh, through his disability from the government or something. I'm not sure, but it seems like she was looking at him all day. I already had diagnosed mental health issues before I went to Scotland, but going there meant I was vulnerable and a lot of traumatic shit happened. I'm working through it with counselors. That's right counselors plural these are what these are the words like she she really wrote that down that's right counselors plural so i don't know if every time she goes to her therapy sessions that there's just this whole board of people trying to figure out what the fuck is wrong with her i'm not trying to be rude but um that sounds a little bit crazy okay and and you know, guys i know traumatic things happen to different people in their life and i know those traumas stay with people um, throughout the entirety of their life. I mean, look at the Aaron Hernandez documentary. Um, but the, the thing is, guys, you got to be stronger than your trauma. You got to eventually let that type of energy go or you're never going to have positive things go on in your life. You're just going to keep being this big old ball of negativity. She says, the question is, where do I go from here job-wise? Despite previously working hard for my money, I've slipped into a pattern of convenience where I just want to sit around all day smoking weed and getting handouts from the government. Okay, so this chick isn't in a good situation. She's 21. She's never had any family support. She's had a couple traumatic things happen to her in life, and uh, now she's built up this habit of being very lazy and uh, pretty much getting spoon-fed those nasty, nasty pieces of cheese from the government. Okay, I don't know how the welfare works over there, but I'm if I'm going to assume it's anything like over here, it's a pretty shitty lifestyle. I've only got experience in the customer service industry, and that's not something I really want to do. How do you figure out what you wanted? I feel truly lost and unmotivated because I know I'll end up in a job I hate. I've tried going to university slash college, but I ended up dropping out as my mental health issues made it difficult to concentrate and keep up with everyone else. All my teenage years, I was deluded of ideas of being a famous singer slash YouTuber. But it is hard to realize that your dreams are unrealistic. 
And of course, you want to hold on to those ideas dearly. It just sounds like you've never had anyone there to push you in your life and you've never had any sort of direction. Like when I started college, uh, what was it? Almost, I think it was five years ago. Uh, I finished after four and a half years. I just finished up in around August. Um, I knew I wanted to do business because I knew that I wasn't, um, it's not that I wasn't smart enough to do something like engineering or computer science or, you know, some other type of science, but um, I knew I didn't have the drive to do those things. I knew I would have been miserable, and I like money. I like, you know, I've always been interested in different matters of business, and I knew that when I got out of college, it was going to be a job that, or a, a degree that could get me a job pretty easily in uh, kind of whatever field I wanted. You know, it's kind of a wide spectrum degree. I knew it wasn't going to be crazy hard. And uh, yeah, so I chose I chose something that I felt like was smart for me. I chose something I felt like I could stick with when it came to school. And uh, I think it was important for me to go and get that degree, even though uh, I don't directly use it you know, every single day, but, uh, in a way I do, because my YouTube channel is like a business, and, uh, yeah, so, I'm using it, but I'm not using it, and it's a nice little safety net to have, a nice little $30,000 safety net to have, so, um, yeah, man, uh, with the whole direction thing, I would just say, you shoot college in the foot, I don't know the way that y'all's industries are built over there in Australia, but at least over here, you can uh, learn some technical skills of being an apprentice, uh, learn some plumbing, electrician. I mean, a job like that is going to end up paying you at least a livable wage. You'd probably be living pretty good, to be honest with you, eventually. Um, so I would maybe consider giving up the whole YouTube thing, giving up the whole singer thing, just because at this point in your life, you need to do something a little bit more practical. If you just sit around smoking all weed all d- weed all day, honestly, you're just going to be a fucking loser for your entire life. That's why you don't know what you want to do is because you've just been sitting on your ass. Like, you don't realize what you want to do in life until you go out there and make some action happen. Like, before I started doing YouTube, I was fully committed to the idea that I was going to do some type of retail, whether it be marketing, whether it be advertisement, whether it be... Um, just different ideas for how you could improve sales and retail. Like I really wanted to get deep into that before I rediscovered my love for YouTube and uh, moved more into this space. But uh, you know, I still got my degree in business management. Um, so my point is that you you need to do something else. Like even let's say you did want to pursue the whole YouTube thing, you got to do something else while you're doing YouTube. Like I was never just doing YouTube until I made enough money off of it to where I could say, okay, fuck everything else. I can focus all my energy on this. Um, I was still spending almost a full-time job either working retail or um, especially when I was uh, doing eBay. That was really like almost a full-time job where I was just reselling. So I always had a grind. You got to always... Um, Always believe in yourself and always make sure you're in motion, man. You got to get up every single day with a purpose. You got to go to bed at night. I recommend journaling and writing down everything you did during the day. And I recommend writing down what you want to get accomplished tomorrow because I think that those things are very important, especially for someone like you who hasn't had a lot of support in their life. So I feel for you, but I'm not going to feel bad for you if you want to change your life. Stop smoking weed every day. That's step number one. Step number two is go find a job. And while you're at that job, meet as many people as you can. And just become passionate about something. You can't. I'm telling you, you can't find your passion by sitting around on your ass all day. This person ends the, this person ends the uh, email by saying, Best of luck with this one, Jamari. By the way, there's nothing I love more than taking a few hits from my bong and watching some of your content. Okay, I'm sorry, but those days are over. At least the bong part. That's got to be it, you know? I got a lot of love for you. I'm going to say a little prayer for you, and uh, I only hope for your best. Okay, this next email says, Hey, Jamari, my name is Pedro. I'm struggling with this problem in my life, and I really need some guidance. Well, that's what I'm here for, man. Dr. Jamari is uh, here to solve the case. When I was 17, I met this girl in my class. She was beautiful on the outside. And on the inside, I guess is what he meant to say. But he said on the outside and on the outside. Uh, Maybe, I don't know, maybe she just had big titties and a fat ass and he was just loving that outside. 
But uh, we got in a relationship, a love relationship. She meant everything to me. I did everything to protect her in our relationship. Gosh, this guy uh, really needs to expand his vocabulary. I chose to be in an art course because of her so I could spend more time with her. That's really sweet, man. Because we had the same passion for anime and art and all of that. Okay, so y'all are, uh, you know, the kids in the library reading the manga. You know, reading the books backwards. One time I was with my friends. I left them to go see her because she felt extremely lonely and sad. Okay, uh... So, so basically this guy's running me down uh, what's going on in their relationship at school. A year and a half later, she decided to broke up with me or decided to break up with him. The reason is still unknown. She gave me three excuses already. One was because she was too busy. Second, because she found someone new. And third, because she wasn't ready for a strong bond. Listen, guys. Uh, some people are really bad at breaking up and just, just being honest with what it is. You know, I, I used to be like that when I was a little bit more immature. And, and I never really wanted to just tell someone, hey, you know. I'm tired of being with you. We uh, don't make each other happy anymore. We're always fighting. So let's just stop doing this. Like I was, uh, for a long time, I was not the guy who was very good at that. I would either be the guy who held on for too long or like this young lady here in the story um, just made some excuse for why, you know, we couldn't be together anymore. It wasn't, it was always, uh, you know, it's not you, it's me. When uh, sometimes it was them and I just uh, wasn't feeling the vibe anymore. I was getting more negativity than positivity out of the relationship. And um, yeah, let's just let's keep going through this one. After hearing all the excuses, we didn't talk for a whole year. She lives four minutes from my house down the street and we are still in the same grade. Recently, I decided to send a note saying, hey, this is stupid. Let's be friends again. I might have friend zoned myself in that moment, but we are reconnecting. Okay, so I guess that he has her kind of back in his life, but, uh, you know, he's obviously in love, and she is definitely not in love with him after a whole year of not talking to him. Look, if a, if a woman can go a whole year without talking to you, she's not in love with you, man. She's she's not in love with you. I, I think a man could definitely go a whole year without talking to someone and, and maybe still be in love with them for some reason, but, uh, you know... Women are more, like, they're going to act on their emotions. And if she really missed you, yeah, she's going to be sending you some some text messages. She's going to be trying to uh, break through that little awkward zone. Uh, and, yeah, it, it's it's not good to send a, anyone a note at any time uh, talking about let's be friends again. You know, there, there's plenty of friends out there. There's plenty of people um, who can be a friend who aren't your ex, in my opinion. So uh, I still love her. I don't know what I should do if I should go back to her if we should be friends or find another person. But the problem is with the last option is no matter how hard I try, I will always remember her and have her in my mind. I don't know what to do. I've tried to end my i I've tried to end myself numerous amounts of times. I I hope he doesn't mean he's tried to, you know, end himself, end himself when he says that over this girl. I don't have any friends to surround myself with. But hey, after all this, I'm hoping she still has feelings for me. Much love, and I hope everything goes well with you, Jamari. You're such a wholesome person. Okay, thank you for the email, man. Um, I appreciate you putting your heart out there on your sleeve. What I really want to say to you is that I know that these relationships that you go through in school and that, you know, that might seem like the most important thing to you in the world at that moment, and you might think, Oh my God, this is the person for me. This is my soulmate. Um, I can't live another day without her. And, you know, that's a completely normal feeling to have, especially at the age that you seem to be. Yeah, you're like 17 or 18 years old. Um, but just as a person who's a couple years outside of that type of um, environment that you are in high school, uh, the world is big, man. There's a lot of people out there. And,. You're probably you're probably not gonna you're not gonna end up with this girl. I wouldn't try to end up with this girl. I would disconnect from her completely, because not because she's a bad person or anything like that, but because I don't think that that's uh, healthy to have any sort of relationship, whether it be a friendship um, with this woman while you're still obviously in love with her, while you still obviously want to be with her. Because if she doesn't want to be with you, your resentment is just gonna grow more and more, 
and um, it's not going to be it's not going to be a good thing. You're mentally going to be uh, even worse off than you seem to be in the email. Um, so that's the first thing I would do is stop talking to this girl. Um, I don't think that you should try to find anyone else either. I think I just think you should try to find uh, more peace with yourself and find out more about yourself. Find some hobbies, you know, find some other stuff you're into, whether it be comedy, sports, um, knitting. I mean, it could be anything, man, but you need to have some sort of purpose. You can't be putting your whole purpose into some 17, 18 year old girl because that's not only not, not only not fair to you, but that's not fair to her. And, um, you know, I, I hope for the best for you, man. I, I think that uh, it's pretty obvious that this girl doesn't want to be together, but she seems like a nice enough person to still have you around in her life. Um, but I think that it's all that needs to end for you right now, man. And you need to reevaluate what you want to be mentally, who you want to be, and not put so much pride, ego, and um, value into someone else, and especially not a relationship. I know life is hard, man, especially those years of of high school and and when you don't really know yourself and and it seems like it's the most important thing. But I'm telling you, there's a lot of life to be lived outside of those school walls, man. So, uh, you know, I pray for you, buddy. Thanks for writing in. This last email I have is also from uh, a young kid. Not a young kid, but like, you know, someone just going into high school. He says, hey there, Jamari, love your content, fucking hilarious shit. I appreciate it, man. My name is Martin, and there's something that's been bothering me for a long time. Oh, like your brother, Rin, who I just talked to in the last email, I'm here to talk, Martin. I'm about to finish middle school, I'm in 8th grade, and ever since I started 8th grade, I always had a crush on this girl. Let me tell you the whole story. She's really nice. I mean, back in 7th grade, all I saw in her was just a plain white girl hoe. Whoa, man. Now you're in love? With a hoe? (laughs) I even made fun of her and laughed at her too. Okay, so you're the little boy type still. I see you're the teasing type. Oh, I'm going to tease you, but I actually love you. But she was nice. So damn nice, I actually became really good friends with her. She has this smile that just lights up your whole damn day. Oh, this guy's got it bad. I'm sprung. Dog, she got me. Like, legit, I'd be having trouble with grades or something, and I'd just pull up and see her in class smiling, and it just makes me feel so much better. Smiling back is fucking impossible, I'm telling you. Why? You know, usually when when I see a... Or, you know, back in the day when I used to see a girl smiling at me, and and I could tell, like, you know, she's smiling that big, she must want to say, what's up, I'm going to smile back. That's how you got to be, or you just hit him with a little head nod. So anyways, it was not a good start in 8th grade. I told my friend who I will identify as Mike that I liked her and he promised he'd keep it a secret. A few days later, I hear someone ask me if that's my girl. Ask me if I like that girl. I'm like, what the fuck? And I eventually, and eventually, I can't read, I'm sorry. And eventually the girl finds out at the beginning of 8th grade. We're not really good friends, so it's kind of awkward being around her once she found out. Oh man, this is the tough situation. Uh, she must not like like you back or something, man. Because if she liked you back, she'd be telling her friends that she likes you. Uh, month after month passed and that girl started dating one of my other friends who I will call Sam. They dated for like three to four days. And it got me really down that she chose Sam over me. So they only dated for three or four days, but you're jealous of him. I, don't, I wouldn't be jealous because uh, now this guy has ruined his chance with that what apparently seems to be everyone's dream girl. You still in the game, man. You still in the game. It's only eighth grade. You got four more years to uh, to train for the championship and make this girl yours. I actually heard straight from Sam that the girl was holding off on dating Sam because I might get depressed and all this weird stuff. And she was right. But she broke up with him. So I kind of started trying to build our friendship. And it wasn't strong enough. And it still wasn't going strong enough. Okay, so this guy just uh, wants the whole world care to him at this point. Mike, who I brought, Mike, who I brought, started dating the girl. The sad part, oh God, so everyone wants this chick. All this guy's friends are plotting on him to get this chick, man. These aren't friends, you know. 
I remember in school, guys would try to do this. You you tell them you like a girl, and all of a sudden, the next week that they're talking, you got to keep that shit under wraps. Got to be texting on the low. Got to be liking her pictures on the low on Instagram. That's why they took away the uh, the page where you could see everyone everything that everyone liked, and those sickos were just scanning it all day. Uh, Mike actually just broke up with another girl, and he told me he wasn't interested in the girl. I was trying my hardest to be cool, friendly, fun, and eventually Mike started dating my girl. The sad part, Mike didn't even have classes with her, <laughs> but I did have one. <laughs> that doesn't matter, dude. That has nothing to do with who she's going to want to date. It's not like if she had three classes with someone, she's going to all of a sudden say, oh, looks like we're lined up together this year. Uh, that's not how it works. So once again, I was down, but still tried to be friends. Guys, you can't still try to be friends. After all this stuff has happened, you know this girl, or this girl knows you have a big crush on her, and you're still going to try and stick around as a little simpy, wimpy friend. I know you guys are young. I know you guys are still in school, but honestly, fuck that. You're just going to end up getting more hurt. And you don't want someone throwing a little pity party for you just being your friend because, oh, you know, I'll never give him a chance, but I'll let him know all my boy trauma. And yeah, fuck all that. Right before winter break, the counselor came to our class. They named a certain group of students, including me, to go outside. The counselor told us this. We want our science classes to be smaller, so Miss Smith has hired has been hired to be the new science teacher for 8th period. You're being transferred into her class along with the other students. And you want to know something? The girl wasn't in the group. Oh, so I just got separated from her. Oh, fate took her right out of your hands, buddy. This one is not meant to be. Okay, they got technology now, guys. If you wanted to hit the girl up, you'd be hitting her up on the cell phone every day. The class shouldn't even matter. I never would have classes with my dumb girlfriends during school. Okay, I was in all the, uh, the, in, in the pre-AP classes. My girlfriends were always dumb. And, uh... Not dumb. All right, people who are in regular classes aren't dumb, but they uh, they weren't like the boy. Okay, I was dating those 2P, 2.0 GPA chicks. Uh, but yeah, I'm sorry, man. That's tragic. When something like that happens in school, you can't help but just fucking slam the fucking desk and want to stab the teacher. Um, she actually sent me a text saying how much she was going to miss me and that we probably won't talk much anymore. I told her I'd try to come into my old science class and talk to her before I go to my new class but still, that's not fair. Dude, this guy is living off the idea of like five, a five-man interaction. And she's already tried to date two of his best friends. This is a this is a sad... Get some self-esteem, man. Meanwhile, for the entirety of this story, which is like six months, Mike, one of my best friends, who I've known since I was two... Wow, Mike's a fucking asshole, dude. You gotta stop being friends with this guy. Never invited me to come over, play, or talk. <laughs> dude, you're in eighth grade and you're still going over to play. Only when he needed me. Bruh, he only invited me when he wanted me to do his homework. Oh my god. Dude, first off, stop hanging out with this guy, Mike. Second off, find a different girl in school or just be by yourself. Him and his popular friends pulled up on my house to eat fucking Lucky Charms because Mike's dad wouldn't let him. <laughs> Week after week, I was starting to realize that I was a, just a tool. So I got pissed at Mike that I was just a tool. I guess he's saying like he's a tool for Mike to use. So I got pissed at Mike and I really don't want to be around him. It just sucks that the girl is into Mike. Yeah, Mike is the douchebag, man. And you're the you're the nice friend who's there to clean up the tears and for her to have a shoulder to cry on. But then the next weekend, she's going to be back at Mike's house. That fucking asshole with his lucky charms. Uh, to give you a solid description, Mike, he's cool, strong, lifts 160 on bench press. Wow, yeah, that's pretty strong for 8th grade. A lady magnet, plays basketball, football, hangs out with all the popular kids. Me, not as cool, maybe 3, 4 is strong and funny, but not very attractive. I run track, hang out with some popular kids. Dude, you sound like me during middle school. Um, you gotta go for the girl who... You know, she ain't into Mike. You know, not every girl's going to be into Mike. You know, I'm, I'm sure he's a lady magnet. I'm sure he does good with the girls. But, uh, you know, find an artsy girl, man. Find a girl who ain't into all that shallow shit. Um, 
He says, what the fuck am I supposed to do? I really want to be with this girl. Uh, yeah, you're not going to be with that girl, buddy. I feel like I'm going to have to crack a lot of eggs here on this uh, here on this podcast, rain on a lot of people's parades. And I'm sorry, but uh, I'm here to be real with you, fellas. I've been through uh, a lot of experience uh, throughout the years with different types of women, different situations, and you're not going to be with this girl, man. You, uh, you're wasting your time. You're wasting your energy. I'm sure that there's some other little cutie giving you the side eye every single class that's in your new science class, and you don't even know it. So uh, all you can do is play You know the cards that you dealt. All you can do is handle uh, what life has thrown at you at this current moment, and it seems like that's going to be not being with this girl and losing one of your best friends who might come back to you at some later time. Maybe he's just going through a douche phase. You guys are young, man. But my advice for you, man, drop the friend for now. Drop the girl for now. Focus on yourself. Maybe try and find a new girl if that's really your thing. But those are going to be all the emails for uh, today's episode. Guys, I really want to thank you if you've listened this far into this shit. This stuff has been really off the cuff. It's been, uh, you know, I'm not super prepared because that's kind of how I want the conversation to be. Like I said, it's like you're just chilling with your friend who you catch up with on a weekly basis at the bar. And then you guys both go your separate ways to live your separate lives. Um, So, yeah, I I have love for each and every one of you guys. I really hope that this podcast manifests into something so much greater. And uh, I really enjoyed this, man. I want to thank you guys for listening whether it be on Spotify, YouTube, Apple Music, or SoundCloud. Um, And I got a lot of love for you guys all. And I'm really excited for this next kind of uh, step out into this new uncharted water for myself, man. So I'm really excited. I think that the podcast is going to hit it big. And as always, the other content is always going to keep rolling in. I'm always going to be hitting home runs when it comes to short videos too, man. So uh, I want to thank you guys for believing in the vision. Thank you guys for all the support. And uh, it's your boy, the Tan Superman. That's episode one of the podcast. And I'm out, guys. Peace.